In this video, I'm going to go through a few questions to um, practice quadratic transformations um, in case you were struggling on Tuesday's assignment, March 30th. So the graph of f of x equals x squared is shown on the grid. Which statement about the relationship between the graph of f and the graph of g of x equals 9x squared is true? So I want to recognize this, that 9 is on the outside of my function. It's on the outside of the parentheses. So it's multiplying all of this by the y values. You want to go back and remember and recall the notes. If you're multiplying something on the outside of the function, that's your a. And if it's greater than 1, it makes your graph more narrow. If not, you can graph both of your functions in your Desmos calculator to visually see what's going on let's see here if I can give me one second so I can move this stuff around. I move that right there. Excuse me. All right, so I can type my x squared here. Okay, I'm having trouble typing x squared, so I think here too. So there's your parent function, and g of x equals 3, let me make sure that's the quadrant, 9x squared. 9x squared. So I can see from the red graph my parent function to the blue graph that my graph became more narrow. So I'm looking for a description of the graph of g is 9 units below, no, the graph of g is narrower than the graph of f. So that's the exact answer I'm looking for. Number two, of the functions listed below, which produces the narrowest graph? Go ahead and graph them in your calculator, but again, you're looking for the graph that becomes, that stretches, and so the greater that value is, um, the, the, the greater that value is than one, it will also make your graph narrow. Know that you can ignore the negative because that is just flipping the graph down. That's not changing the narrowness. So when you're looking at this value in front of x squared, you should be looking at the absolute value, look at the positive value to identify that. And again, you can graph all four of these functions in the calculator to see which one is the narrowest. In this question, one parabola below has the equation y equals parentheses x minus 4 squared plus 2. Which equation represents the second parabola? So one parabola represents this equation given to me. So what I want to recognize is which one is that? So I need to say, okay, x minus 4, when I look at this, it's on the inside of the parentheses and it moves left and right. It's the opposite sign, so I'm moving right 4. The plus 2 on the outside says that I'm going to move up 2. So when I go to look at my graph, I want to recognize the blue graph moves right 4 and up 2. So here, the blue graph represents this function here. Now I need to ask myself which function would represent the red graph. So looking at the red graph, all it does is move the graph over the same amount, right 4 and up 2, but since it flips the graph over the x-axis, I'm looking for this negative value, but I want to keep the same exact equation. I should have a minus 4 and a plus 2 when I'm looking for the final answer. So here at the bottom is a correct answer. The minus 4 plus 2 on the outside. Number four, determine the effect of the graph of the parent function f of x equals x squared when f of x is replaced by f 
parentheses b times x, where b is 3. So this is where you want to go back and reference your notes. Inside of the parentheses is that value b. So when b is on the outside, when or inside, when that value is on the inside and it's being multiplied by your x values, we call this a horizontal stretch by, and you look at that value and you take the reciprocal of it. So in this question, b is 3. So if I'm trying to describe the transformation, it's a horizontal stretch or compression based on that graph. So if I go and I look at my notes, when that value is in between 0 and 1 inside the parentheses, it's a horizontal stretch. When that value is greater than 1 inside the parentheses, it's a horizontal compression. So here, the graph will compress horizontally. And again, you can graph this in your Desmos calculator to visually see inside the parentheses if I have that equation where b is equal to 3. I'm going to put a 3 in front of here and close the parentheses off. And when I close the parentheses off, I'm going to automatically see, hang on, let's close these parentheses. I'm not sure where the parentheses go. Let's see. The blue graph shows that it becomes narrower and it's a horizontal compression. Function P is in the form y equals ax squared plus c. If the values of a and c are both greater than zero, which graph could represent p? So what I want to think of is this value in front of x squared. If it's greater than zero, not only will my graph face up, but it's going to make my graph either narrow or wide. If the value of c is greater than zero, then that means C is the Y value on that vertex piece. It's the um, moving my graph up and down. So if I look here, my graph moved down. This tells me that negative 4 is C. C is not greater than 0 in this first graph. In the next graph, if my graph is facing down, but that value here is 5, Yes, it did move up 5, and C is greater than 5, but A is not greater than 0. A here is a negative value because my graph is facing down. When I look at this graph, the vertex is at 0, 0. So it is exactly 0. C is exactly 0 here. So that's not correct. Here, if I look at this graph, it did move up 3 units and the a value is greater than zero because my graph is facing up. So this would be the correct graph. Number six, quadratic function q and w are graphed on the same grid. The vertex of the graph of q is 18 units below the graph of w. Which pair of function could have been used to create the graph of q and p? So if q I'm trying to look at my pen here. Sorry, guys. Okay. If Q is 18 units below the vertex of W, I want to think about this graph moving down 18 units. So I should recognize a minus 18 on the outside. Here, this is the only equation that has a minus 18 on the outside. So Q is the one that should be 18 units below the vertex of this parent function. All of them have the parent function as W of X. So in order to recognize the vertex below, I'm looking for that minus 18 on the outside. Again, you can graph the two equations to visually see this, and you're going to see it 
if one equation is f of x equals x squared, the other equation we said would have a minus 18 on the outside of that x squared. This shows me that the vertex is below the parent function here, 18 units. So that first answer would be correct. Number seven, this is spiral review. The graph below describes a linear relationship. Which of the following functions represents the relationship shown in the graph? You can take your, your y-intercept, your x-intercept, and find your slope and identify the equation. Or if you're struggling with this material, you can always go back and graph this in the calculator. If I'm using the two pretty points where they cross at intersect intersections, I'm going to find the slope, which is m. Your slope is always m. Rise over run. So I'm going down one, two, three, four units, and right two units. When I go down, my slope is negative. So going down four units, excuse me, going down four units and write two units, I need to divide negative four divided by two, which is negative two. And then I need B, the y-intercept, which this crosses at positive four. So writing the equation, I should have y equals negative 2, x goes with your slope, plus 4. And again, if you're struggling with this concept, you can graph each one of these in your calculator and check to make sure that that is correct. Alrighty, next one. Number 8. On number eight, spiral review again. What is the solution to the system of equations below? There's two choices. You can solve each one for y and graph them in the calculator to visually see, or you can use substitution. If you go ahead and move, let's take this first equation, and we're gonna solve for y. So I'm gonna move the four x over to the right side by subtracting. So when I subtract it, it becomes three y, equals negative 4x because I subtracted the 4x over and then the plus 7 just gets tacked on at the end. It doesn't matter what goes first if you have a plus 7 or a positive 7 minus 4x that's still the same thing. Simplify, get rid of that value in front of the y, you're solving for y, so divide each individual term by 3. So here's one of your equations, y equals negative 4 thirds x plus 7 thirds. There's nothing you can do here to simplify. Don't, you don't have to change them to fractions. You don't have to round. Here, if I want to solve for y, I would need to move the x over to the right. So subtract x. So I should get 2y equals negative x minus 2. Now I need to divide each term by 2 to get rid of that value in front of the y. When I divide each term by a positive 2, this equation now becomes y equals, this is a negative 1 divided by 2, a negative 1 half x negative 2 divided by positive 2, oops, that's x, is a negative 1. Now I can take both of these equations and graph them in my calculator. So y equals negative 4 thirds x plus 7 thirds, and y equals negative 1 half x minus 1. So let's see how that's going to look in your calculator so we can find the solution. And the solution to the system of equations will be where the two equations intersect at that value. 
So y equals negative 4 thirds x. Oh, goodness. Plus 7 thirds. And the other equations, y equals negative 1 half x minus 1. So the two lines will intersect at 4 comma 3, and that will be the solution to the equations. In this question, the graph of f of x equals x squares was transformed to create the graph of g of x shown on the grid. Here's that parent function, and here's the new function. Which equation best describes g of x? We ask yourself, where did the graph move? Up, down, right, or left? The graph of the parent function moved down four units. If my graph is moving down four units, I need to recognize that that should be a minus four on the outside of the function. So if you can't recognize that, you can always graph your equations to check your answers. Determine the effects on the graph of the parent function f of x equals x squared when f of x is replaced by f of x plus d, where d is equal to negative 4. What's going to happen to this graph if I change d to a negative 4? Well, that means there's a minus 4 on the outside of my function. When there's a minus 4 or adding, adding or subtracting on the outside of my function, it moves my graph up and down. So it's not a vertical stretch, it's not a um, compression vertically, it's either moving it up or down. Well, if it's on the outside, it's a true sign, so you're moving down four units. I hope this was helpful. If you need any help, please make sure you reach out to me.